the seat at San Pedro in the south of Los Angeles early in the morning. The night before, I had arrived in Hotel Pacific Inn nearby. My wife Afke is still asleep. Suddenly, I see a large container ship. I like the sound of the sea. Back at the hotel, Afke is on the balcony. From the balcony, we have a nice view on the Bay of San Pedro, where the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach are one big port, the ninth largest of the world. The two ports are public ports, managed by the cities of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Both ports want to be environment friendly. Since 2006, they have a joint environment plan, the San Pedro Bay Clean Air Action Plan, to reduce pollution from ships, trains, trucks, hovercraft and cargo handling equipment. We go to the beach at San Pedro. Here in this bay, the port of Los Angeles was founded in 1907. The port of Long Beach was founded 10 years later, in 1917. The port of San Pedro already existed and got its name from the Spaniards who conquered the place. Afka likes to paint. We are writing a book about world ports. Here you see the port of Los Angeles in 1913 at San Pedro Bay. And here is a map of Los Angeles with the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach at the south. Right in the middle of the port of Los Angeles there was a community of 3,000 Japanese living and working on Terminal Island. Most men were fishermen. The women worked in the fishing canning industry. The fishing industry was the largest of the United States. In the Second World War the Japanese bombed American marine ships in Pearl Harbor. A few months later the Japanese at Terminal Island were deported and sent to prisoners camps. They lost their houses their shops, cafes, community centers, schools and belongings. In 2002, a monument was built at Terminal Island to commemorate the injustice done to this Japanese community. In San Pedro, big ships pass by very closely. Here you see one at the end of the street. The ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach are successful with their Clean Air Action Plan. In 10 years time, diesel particulate matter went down by 85%, nitrogen oxides by 52% and sulfur oxides by 97%. We visit the Environment Director of Long Beach Port, Heather Thompson. I have a question for you. I just thought about it. What do you say to people when you are in a party and they say, oh, you're working at a port? Mm -hmm. So you're working at the biggest polluter of, uh, of L.A. or L.B.? When I first started at the port, I got that comment more often. I don't get that comment anymore. And I think it's because we have done such a good job of addressing the impacts that we have. I, I, t I mentioned that I had previously worked at an air district before coming here. So I worked for air quality, you know, regulatory, yeah. the, the government that would impose rules on polluters and industry. And 
And a lot of the folks from there had that comment of, how could you go work for them? They're, oh, yes. they're dirty yeah, polluting the industry. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, is I, I think that the port, our leadership, our management has really embraced that we have a role in doing something mm -hmm. to reduce our impacts. And I'm in the best position that I can be in to be able to do something about that. We also speak to Philip Senfield, Director of Media Relations at the Port of Los Angeles. He accompanies us on a boat trip that we make through the Port of Los Angeles. Our guide of today. grown so much over the last 34 years is because of our our geography we're the gateway to to cargo in Asia all of the countries in Asia Japan China uh, Vietnam uh, Singapore all these countries that is where probably 90 percent of the cargo coming into Los Angeles comes from our Asian trade partners China is at the top of that list. It used to be Japan was the number one trading partner. But um, that, and that was so in the 70s and the 80s. And that started to change in the 90s as China became more dominant. And to give you an idea, uh, we had in the late 80s probably 200 or 300,000 TEUs a year coming from China and now it's probably four million or so. Um, so China, is right today, about 60% of the goods coming into the port uh, come from China. el café muy importante el café gracias Everport Terminal is located at Terminal Island. It is a container terminal with three berths and 11 cranes. Its plan is to deepen its berths and improve its terminal facilities to accommodate the larger next generation mega ships. This ship, Costco Italy, is one of the mega ships visiting the Everport Terminal. The Port of Los Angeles is investing in infrastructure to deepen harbor channels, extend crane reach and increase storage and backland transport for mega ships that carry more cargo and make fewer visits. Mega ships increase supply chain velocity and improve the region's air quality. The Port of Los Angeles receives more mega ships than any other port in North America. The suspension bridge connects San Pedro with Terminal Island and goes on as a highway to Long Beach. 
Before it was opened in 1963, there were ferry services to Terminal Island. On our walk along the waterfront, we come across a statue of Harry Bridges, founder of the International Longshoremen's and Warehousemen's Union, ILWU. He was a young Australian seaman who arrived in 1920 in San Francisco and became one of America's famous labor union leaders. He was the president of ILWU from 1937 until 1977, so 40 years. There is a nice song and film about him. Here is the initial part. Let me tell you of a sailor, Harry Bridges is his name. An honest union leader who the bosses tried to brain. He left home in Australia to sail the seas around. He sailed across the ocean to land in Frisco town. There was only a company union, the bosses had their way. A worker had to stand in line for a lousy dollar a day. When up spoke Harry Bridges, us workers got to get wise. Our wives and kids will starve to death if we don't get organized. Oh, the FBI is worried, the bosses, they are scared. They can't depart six million men, they know. We'll fight for Harry Bridges and build the CIO. 